As always guys, if you enjoy my videos, like, subscribe, and check out my channel for more. I do go to several abandoned schools, and right now I'm at an abandoned shopping center, as you can see. So let me know if you like this video in the comments below. First things first, I drove around Pontiac for around an hour and a half, so I might not have covered your specific street, but I probably came pretty close. So don't tell me that I didn't show any good parts, any bad parts, just no. No. Just chill out, okay? Well, you can see the streets that I did roll through highlighted on the map. So I wanted to say this. This was my most viewed video on this channel and it was called Pontiac, Michigan's Forgotten Ghetto. I made quite a few factual errors in this video and I hesitated with this decision as it had the most views and likes out of all of my videos. My channel is still relatively new and I'm looking to grow this channel into one of the better travel channels on YouTube featuring as many US cities as possible. To all of you who have subscribed and have watched my videos, I can't thank you enough. It's a very ambitious endeavor to visit every US city as there are tens and thousands of them, but it's also my duty to not speed through the production parts of these videos in order to upload new content quickly. That's something that I struggled with in the first few months of creating this channel. My original Pontiac video had quite a few factual errors as I mentioned just a bit ago that needed to be corrected, so I took down the original and uploaded a more polished video with a new voiceover correcting the mistakes that I made in the original video. So I hope that this one proves to be more accurate. O oh, Pontiac, Pontiac, where art thou Pontiac? Many of you probably know of Pontiac as a car brand that became defunct in 2010. The Pontiac brand was founded in 1926 right here in Pontiac, Michigan. General Motors owned the brand and announced its fate in 2008 when the car manufacturing giant was going through Chapter 11 reorganization during the 2008 recession. Four years prior, another GM-owned brand, Oldsmobile, ceased production. Pontiac's assembly plants once employed tens of thousands of workers. There are no assembly plants left in Pontiac, but GM keeps their stamping plant and their global propulsion systems offices in the city. The auto industry has been tough on this town, and you can see how tough it has been by looking at this abandoned school. This is the former Franklin Elementary School. The city school district announced the closure of Franklin Elementary in 2009. Throughout this video I visit several more abandoned schools, an abandoned shopping center, the former Silverdome site with an old recording that I made back in 2017 that shows you the final days of the Pontiac Silverdome, the up and coming South Boulevard Corridor, which is home to the headquarters of United Shore, the remaining GM stamping plant, downtown, Summit Place Mall, and I finished by driving around the Oakland County government buildings. Didn't catch all of that? No worries. I listed in the description below where you can skip ahead in the video to get to a part that you might want to see. I also speed up the video in order to show more in a less amount of time. This is the former Jefferson Junior High and Whittier Elementary School. The two schools consolidated in 2009, while the school was boarded up in 2012. This school is just one of many fortress-like schools that this video will show. Up ahead you can see construction that is for a property off of Telegraph that was once a giant failure of a retail project called Bloomfield Park. Bloomfield Park stood half built for several years and I attached a 2016 Google Street View screenshot of this property from Telegraph. Not a very nice building to cast shadows over your city. The new development is called The Village at Bloomfield and there is already an Aldi and Menards that are opened on the site. Now they're working on building apartments, senior living, a hotel, and a Henry Ford clinic. Before we move on from this neck of the woods, here is one more shot of the former Jefferson Whittier School.
Pontiac is the seat of Oakland County, and it's kind of ironic when you consider that Oakland County is the most prosperous county in Michigan and one of the richest counties with a population of over 1 million in the entire U.S. Pontiac had a peak population of 85,000 back in 1970. Today, the population is 59,700, which is a gain of 300 from the 2010 census. Has Pontiac turned the corner? Only time will tell. The latest data says that the median household income here is $33,000 per year with a 31% poverty rate. Only 12% of adults 25 years and older hold at least a bachelor's degree, and only 78% have a high school diploma. The violent crime rate is 1,335 per 100,000 residents, and with those numbers, I would say that Pontiac still has quite a way to go, but it does seem like it's on the right track. This neighborhood of Pontiac is called Seminole Hills and is easily the nicest neighborhood in Pontiac to live in. About 2,500 people call Seminole Hills home and the median household income is around 60000 a year. However, the streets are still pothole ridden in the city's nicest neighborhood. This next abandoned school will rival the others that I show you in this video in terms of beauty. This is Washington Middle School, which closed in 2007. After a quick spin around the block, you'll get to see a different view. On the left is Pontiac General Hospital, one of two hospitals in the city, the other being McLaren Oakland Hospital in downtown which we will see towards the end of the video. This is the site of the abandoned Webster Elementary School which closed in 2006.
This giant fortress of a school is the abandoned Lincoln Junior High School, which was boarded up in 2009. A different angle up ahead shows how beautiful this building really is. On the left you can see an open window as I was able to get a camera shot of inside that open window after parking the car up ahead. I could have easily hopped inside as you can tell but I'm not about that life of going inside long abandoned buildings. I'm fine with watching other YouTubers doing that instead. As someone commented in my original Pontiac video that was up, I missed showing another abandoned school. This one is called McCarroll and it's located on the right at the intersection with Glenwood. To the left is the remaining GM stamping plant and the GM Global Propulsion Systems offices. This is the abandoned LeBaron Elementary School which closed in 2009.
Now this is the abandoned Glenwood Shopping Center. In March of 1962, the second Kmart store ever to exist opened up shop here. The first one was opened in Garden City just a few hours before this one here was opened. This Kmart had everything, including an outdoor garden center and an auto service center. You can see the auto service center where the white garages are. To those who don't know, Kmart was a Metro Detroit based company at first until it bought out Sears and moved into their headquarters in Illinois in 2006. Currently in May of 2000. 2020, there is only one Kmart store left in Michigan, and that is the town of Marshall, which is about a 15-minute drive east of Battle Creek. For the rest of the Glenwood Shopping Center, there is a Farmer Jack and Federal's Department Store located on this side of the shopping center. Soon this abandoned shopping center will look completely different as the city approved a development in January 2020 for a $45 million medical marijuana park. A grocery store is also included in the plans. This development is expected to create three to 400 jobs. To the right is the side of where the Pontiac Silverdome used to be, home to the Detroit Lions from 1975 to 2001. Many think of the great Lions running back Barry Sanders when they think of the Silverdome, as he is by far and away the greatest player to wear a Lions jersey. The Lions had their most successful football seasons in the Super Bowl era at the Silverdome. The Lions have only one playoff win to their name in the Super Bowl era, and that playoff win came here when they beat the Cowboys in the 1991 NFL playoffs. The Detroit Pistons also played their home games at the Silverdome from 1978 to 1988. The Bad Boy Pistons era began while they were playing here in the Silverdome, and after some success, they were able to play in a world-class facility called the Palace of Auburn Hills, which was built just a few miles from here. That arena is now in the process of being torn down as the Pistons have moved into downtown Detroit at Little Caesars Arena in 2017. Now, an Amazon warehouse is being constructed at the site. It's going to be a $250 million investment by Amazon and will bring 1,500 jobs to the area. The mortgage industry has really made its roots in Metro Detroit in recent years. Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans has its headquarters in downtown Detroit and United Shore is headquartered in Pontiac. United Shore started with around 500 employees in 2011 and now has over 2,600. Plans were just announced in February of 2020 to build the longest enclosed pedestrian bridge in the United States. That bridge will go over South Boulevard to connect United Shore's facilities on both sides of the road.
This is the former Longfellow Elementary School, which closed in 2010. This is the abandoned Purdue Academy. And oh yes, Downtown Pontiac. Downtown Pontiac hosts a collection of really cool older buildings and appears to have the bones and potential to be something special one day. Pontiac was here before all of the other Detroit suburbs were built that surround the city today. Pontiac is the second organized settlement in close proximity to Detroit, as Dearborn was the first. Pontiac was founded in 1818 and became a city in 1861. The Clinton River once flowed through downtown Pontiac, but since has been buried to flow underneath downtown town to allow for more development. This is Saginaw Street, which has historically been Pontiac's main street. It provides Pontiac with nightlife as it has restaurants and small shops. The white canopies on the left ahead are a part of the Phoenix Center, which didn't turn out the way that the city of Pontiac had hoped. It was meant to be an event space, but it wasn't used much, and years of neglect has led to the property needing some costly repairs. There has been an ongoing legal battle with the Ottawa Towers and the city of Pontiac, as the once emergency managers of the city wanted to tear it down to help with the city's budget, but the people over at Ottawa Towers fought for it to stay standing. The current mayor wants the Phoenix Center to be redeveloped into what it was supposed to be from the beginning. This shiny blue glass building is the McLaren Oakland Hospital, which is the second hospital in Pontiac. In case you missed it, I showed the Pontiac General Hospital earlier in the video. Once again, there is a timeline in the description and in the comments below showcasing where things are throughout the video. Before we turn onto the Woodward Avenue loop, here's a shot of the Pontiac City Hall. The Woodward Loop used to be called Wide Track Avenue, but now it's just called the Woodward Loop, and it's considered to be the end of Woodward Avenue, which is Detroit's heart and glory. Woodward Avenue is one of the most iconic and historic roadways in the entire U.S.
And for the last abandoned school that I feature in this video, this is the abandoned Pontiac Central High School which closed in 2009. The school had an enrollment of over 1,000 students. To the left is the site of the former Summit Place Mall. The mall closed in December of 2014 and demolition began in spring of 2019. Latest news on the site is that it's going to become a new business park called the Oakland County Business Center. Currently it's just a bunch of rubble and scraps as the mall is in the final stages of demolition in this video. And last but not least, this is where all of the Oakland County government facilities and buildings are located. Oakland County is home to just under 1.3 million people and is the second largest county by population in Michigan. The median household income here is $76,000 per year, making Oakland County one of the richest for counties of over 1 million residents in the U.S. Well that's it for this video, if you enjoyed make sure to drop a like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time that I post new and amazing content just like this video. We'll see you next time, peace!